In this video, I'm going to show you how you can grow thousands of paramecia so that you have plenty of things uh, to observe under the microscope. And later on in the video, I'm also going to give you some culturing and some observation tips as well. So you might want to watch until the very end of the video. Of course, hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here, and welcome to the Microscopy Advice and Observation Channel. Now, there might be the problem uh, that a water sample that you would like to observe under the microscope simply does not have enough interesting water life to look at. There can be a variety of reasons for this. Uh, during winter time, generally there are not so many water organisms um, in a, a pond or in a lake or you might simply have a too low of a concentration of uh, microorganisms in a water sample and therefore the water sample might look a little bit boring and uninteresting. Uh, luckily it is uh, quite easily possible to culture paramecia, these are single celled uh, microorganisms, it's quite easy to culture them and in this video I'm going to show you what you can do here. Now why paramecia? Paramecia are quite uh, common and popular uh, specimens to observe under the microscope. They're single-celled protists and they're good for observation because even though they're single-celled, they're relatively large and therefore you can observe uh, quite well what's happening inside the cell. They also like to move ar uh, around and they respond uh, to the environment and in other words, <laughs> they're quite uh, fun and interesting to watch um, as well. Paramecia, they feed off a decaying plant material and uh, when you collect a water sample from a pond or from a stream um, then uh, you have to also take along not only the water but also uh, some solid plant material um, as well. Um, so for example some decaying leaves or some pieces of wood and so on. Usually can, you can find them also grow in the sediment uh, of uh, the pond or of uh, the river or a stream uh, where you collect the sample. So collect some material from the bottom um, of the water. Now you need to add a little bit of food. Um, so when you have uh, the water sample in your jar, uh, then uh, I would uh, suggest uh, that uh, you add uh, some food like for example, a crushed wheat grain or some breakfast cereal, maybe even a cornflake uh, should also work. Because uh, what happens when you add the food is, is that bacteria starts to grow on the food and the paramecia they feel will feed off the bacteria and then they will also start to reproduce and to divide. Um, it's quite easy uh, to do. All you do is you take uh, the cereal and uh, you simply drop it into the water sample. And this way you're establishing a small food chain. The bacteria feed off the starch uh, of the food and then the paramecia feed off the bacteria. And yeah, after a few days, after approximately three or four days, um, you have to then put a small sample of the food under the microscope and then if you're lucky uh, then you're going to see uh, a lot of uh, paramecia maybe even hundreds of them you know that uh, you're ready to observe uh, this uh, when the cereal that you put in starts to form a so-called slime layer it starts to uh, change around in texture it looks a little bit hmm, not quite appetizing but this is a sign that there is actually quite something going on here and that there are probably many ciliates not only paramecia but also probably other ciliates um, in uh, this uh, slime layer that you basically now have forming around uh, the cereal of course you want to use uh, tweezers to take out uh, the food and uh, you simply dip it a little bit on a glass slide you put a cover glass on top and of course the rest of the food goes back into the water sample and then you would of course you would like to observe everything um, under low magnification because um, this gives you the best overview and because the cells they move around so quickly uh, that uh, by using a low magnification you're able to see simply more um, of uh, the microscope slide so now i'm going to give you uh, 10 uh, tips uh, that should help you to grow and to enrich uh, those paramecia Tip number one, really make sure that the paramecia and the cells receive enough oxygen. This is really important uh, and you can ensure that by not using too much water. Because if you have too much water, then the bottom of uh, the jar, the bottom part of the water on the jar will not receive a lot of oxygen because the oxygen is not able to diffuse so well all the way to the bottom. Um, also do not overfeed because when you add too much food, then too many bacteria are going to form and they will also use 
use up a lot of the oxygen and this will inhibit the growth uh, of the paramecia. You might also consider to include a few algae, some green material, plant material maybe as well, because uh, photosynthesis will happen and uh, then the plants will produce oxygen as well. I found uh, that uh, the paramecia not only like to gather around the food, but also around uh, algae and uh, other yeah, plant material that you have in the water sample. So tip number two, uh, make sure that uh, you do not have any water fleas or other water crustaceans in the water sample because they like to feed uh, on the paramecia. Yeah, you can see them quite easily because they're quite large. The water fleas are around a millimeter in size. Yeah, it's simply something to take into consideration. So tip number three, you play, please do consider that the source of the water must be cool, must be right. If you have a small puddle that just has formed after a rainfall, then you're not going to find a lot of paramecia there, or actually none at all, because paramecia are not able to form cysts and they're not able to withstand periods of dryness. So uh, the water body of water that you use to collect the water sample should be yeah a permanent body of water, like a small pond or so. Also, do not use any sewage water, um, not only for health reasons, but also sewage water often does not contain a lot of oxygen because uh, the bacterial concentration is so high and uh, paramecia often like also to have reasonably clean water and uh, clean and oxygen rich water and sewage water simply is not suitable and I think it's also not very healthy. Tip number four, um, keep checking. Um, so if you do not uh, see any interesting water life today then wait until tomorrow because there is going to be a progression of microorganisms. Certain microorganisms will grow and they will overgrow the others and others will again disappear. So over the course of a week or two weeks, you're actually going to see that uh, different microorganisms start to increase in number and paramecia are generally one of the dominant forms that you're able to find. Of course, tip number five, do try different types of food as well. Um, it does not only have to be, only have to be a crushed wheat grain, but you can also add a very small amount of milk. Just make sure that it's not too much again. It, the water sample should turn just a little bit cloudy. Um, or you can add also some dry yeast. Uh, paramecia also like to eat those and uh, when you wait a few days then the water should clear up again and uh, this means that the milk and or the yeast has been eaten up by the paramecia and also the number of paramecia has now increased. Tip number six, uh, over time the water does evaporate of course uh, and do not use chlorinated water when uh, replenishing the water. Ideally you're going to use again uh, pond water from the same place where you collected the original water sample from but you can use tap water um, and if there is chlorine in the water let the water stand for a few days to allow the chlorine to escape. And uh, if you do not have uh, yeah, water available, then you can, of course, uh, dechlorinated water available, then you, of course, you can also use bottled water. This also works. Tip number seven, yes, do clean your tools. Um, there are bacteria, of course, on your tools and you want to make sure that everything is clean also for health reasons. Tip number eight, um, the paramecia, they like to move around quite quickly and uh, if you use only a very small amount of water, um, then uh, you, this will limit the movement. The paramecia then going to be sandwiched between the cover glass and the glass slide and the microscope slide and this limits the movement uh, to the extent that uh, they really slow down a lot um, and you're able to observe them much better. Tip number nine, um, yes, uh, there are different parts in a jar, the bottom part, the top part, uh, there where there are algae, there where you, uh, there is the food. Do put different parts uh, of this uh, water sample under the microscope uh, and you're going to see that uh, in different parts of the same jar, different microorganisms might uh, accumulate. So, for example, um, those microorganisms that need a lot of oxygen can be probably found around the algae and also at the surface of the water because the oxygen concentration is highest there. And I've also seen other microorganisms gather around the food more. Yes, you simply have to ex experiment around a little bit and uh, you're going to be quite uh, surprised um, which uh, microorganisms you're going to be able to find. And tip number 10, if everything fails, if nothing works, well, <laughs> yes, you can always buy paramecia online uh, from educational supplies companies uh, or even aquarium shops that sell them as a source of food for fish. 
um, yeah, and that's pretty easy to do, but I would say it's much more interesting to experiment around yourself uh, a little bit and to enrich them yourself. I think I'm just going to leave it at that right now. Uh, do leave uh, comments behind, try it out yourself and share your success or your failures even with uh, the community. That's why we have a comments section below. I wish you all the best. Uh, happy microbe hunting as always and uh, see you around next time. Bye bye.